It is a Tuesday, February 1st. Hey, we're getting closer to spring. January has been defeated. Uh, the month actually went very fast for me, and I'm grateful for that. And, uh, yeah, spring is always something great <clears throat> to look forward to, isn't it? Yes, indeed. So, today, we are in Mark chapter 5. In our Bibles, and uh, we're following Mark's gospel on espresso, as they say it. Fast moving, exciting account of the uh, exploits of our great Savior and hero, Jesus Christ. So let me pray. Father, I pray that you would settle the word deep into our hearts today. Help us to remember who you are. I pray that you would reveal yourself to everybody today through your word and through this day. You give wisdom and grace to all of us as we go about our day. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we go, Mark chapter 5. Verse 1. So they arrived at the other side of the lake. So Jesus, um, it had been quite a day. They got in the boat, they crossed the lake, massive storm. And Jesus got up and told the wind and the waves to stop. And they stopped quite the day they land the boat and this is what happens they arrive at the other side of the lake in the region of the garrisons <coughs> excuse me <coughs> <coughs> wow let me take a sip of my coffee let's start again you gotta love live right so they arrived at the other side of the lake after the storm in the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, a man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. So they landed at a graveyard. This man lived in the burial caves and could no longer be restrained even with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, he snapped the chains from his wrists and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Day and night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. When Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him, ran to meet him, and bowed low before him. With a shriek, he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? In the name of God, I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, Come out of the man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus demanded, What is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, because there are many of us inside this man. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to some distant place. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on a hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits begged. Let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd of about 2,000 pigs plunged down into the, down the heaps, the steep hillside, into the lake, and they drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town and the surrounding countryside. Spreading the news as they ran, people rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus. And they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons. He was sitting there, fully clothed and perfectly sane. 
and they were all afraid. Then they, then those who had seen what happened told the others about the demon-possessed man and the pigs, and the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. But Jesus said, No, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and see how merciful he has been. So the man started off to visit the ten towns of that region and began to proclaim the great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed at what was told them. This is God's word. In our culture, that's a pretty funky story. In our culture, it's because there's a denial of the supernatural and spiritual world. In Africa, nobody would have a problem with this. They know the spirit world's real. In the day and age that Jesus lived in, nobody would have a problem believing this because they knew demons were real. Darkness is real. The reality of another dimension with beings that we can't see isn't any more of a stretch than the invisible things that we can't see in the physical word, world like molecules and atoms and oxygen and radiation. We know it's there. We have equipment that can detect that, but we haven't invented any equipment that can see into the spiritual world yet. But when they shine light from a laser against a wall, not all of the laser hits the wall. They've proven there's something there between the laser and the wall that's blocking part of the laser light. What is that? Well, there's another dimension that we just can't see into, and that's the spiritual world. And there's real forces of evil. Actually, if you ask me, my opinion is this. You want verifiable proof evil's real? Just listen to a true crime podcast. My daughters are into this podcast. They love it called My Favorite Murder. And it's like I listened to one episode with them. I was like, okay, I'm done. But true crime shows you evil's real. If you don't believe in evil then I don't think you're admitting to the reality of life. Where does that come from? John 10, Jesus talks about how the devil has come to steal, kill, and destroy people. This man's life had been tortured for years with demon possession. These demons were out to steal, kill, and destroy this man's life. And they had done that. He was all by himself, wandering around the tombs. Nobody could contain him. Um, demons uh, are fallen angels, so they have power beyond mortal man. And they, they were possessing him so badly, nobody could contain him in chains. The demons were busting the chains. And here we see Jesus continuing his war on evil. For he was good itself. We get the word good from the word God. Jesus was God. Jesus was good. He walked into the darkness and he rebuked the evil ones. Good is stronger than evil. It's not dualism where there are two equal forces and, you know, depending on the day, one of them will win. Good is boot. Evil is ant. Boot versus ant. Jesus comes in and there's no comparison when Jesus shows up. Look what happened. The man saw Jesus and the demons had to bow, and that's the first thing they did, was bow before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You can't stand up against Jesus Christ. He's not just some nice prophet in a white dress with a blue sash that are in so many walls of houses. He is God with skin on. When, when he, they saw him, they ran to meet him, and they bowed low before him with a shriek because they knew they were in trouble when they saw the Lord Jesus and they called him the Son of the Most High God. They recognized no problem. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He is God with skin on. God the Son come to earth in the flesh. And they say, don't torture us. Some, some translations say, when, they, when we read, don't send us to a different place. They knew they were in trouble. They were afraid Jesus was going to send them into the abyss. Hell itself. And um, in Luke, it says that in Luke's account of this. Now, Jesus values people, even over animals, and he loves animals, but the demons, he, he sent them out of the man to free the man and uh, sent them into the, into the pigs. And those pigs died 
steal, kill, and destroy. That's the purpose of evil. And they plunge down a steep hillside into the lake and they drown in the water. And this awful scene shows the herdsmen and everybody around them that Jesus was real and he was God and he had freed this man. This man who had been tortured his whole life the next time they saw him, he was no longer naked and scarred. He was fully clothed and in his right mind. He was perfectly sane after all those years and everybody was afraid. Well, just the way the disciples were afraid that Jesus stood up and a man said to the storm, stop it, and it stopped it. When they saw a man say to these demons, leave the man, and they did it, they saw Jesus was much more than just a man who's starting a new religion. And Jesus says, okay, I'll leave. People were so afraid of him that instead of saying, what can we do to be free and never experience this before? Because you're obviously a powerful prophet. They didn't. They wanted him out of there. So Jesus left. But the man who had been saved, and this is the difference between the crowd and the people that meet Jesus. The crowd says, go away. We don't want you here. Even though we've seen what you can do, the man who was rescued knows how lucky he is that he was rescued he knew what he was before and now he was free so he was thankful and he says lord let me follow you and jesus said no you need to go spread the word that i'm here and tell your family what the lord had done can you imagine that man going home and they got they got their tommy back he was now a completely different person he was that young healthy boy that they knew when he was little before whatever happened to him happened and he he lost his freedom and now he had it back so here we go jesus is sending a man who'd been free to proclaim the freedom that jesus had given him and uh now this man was it was free and david guzik good pastor says as part of their fear of the people was found in the fact that their superstitions had been shattered they didn't know what to make of it all according to their superstitions the demons should have had the upper hand over jesus but they didn't they had a hard time accepting this and they began to plead with him to depart from their region before they didn't seem to have they didn't seem to mind having a weird demon possessed man around yet they did mind having jesus around it's sad they asked him to leave he could have set how many more people free but that man went home and he told his family about what happened and here's the thing who are you going to fear and this this is this is respect for god and jesus and give him the due respect and say you are obviously more than just a religious founder you are god and i will submit my life to you that would be the smart thing to do and get onto the winning side because when it comes to this these people didn't get onto the winning side they chose to just be on their own the man was on the winning side and he knew it and he asked jesus if he could follow him and jesus says i need you to obey me and go tell your family you've been set free what when people are more afraid of what jesus will do in their lives than what satan does in the moment they often push jesus away don't push jesus away this is your moment this is our moment and this is our chance to come to Jesus now and to be on the winning side, be on the side of protection. Um, when it comes to evil, there's a couple of things we have to keep in mind here. You go right to God the Father in Jesus' name. You pray to God to smash the evil. Well, you and me don't have the power to smash evil. We have the living spirit of God inside us and a direct line to God the Father. And when you pray, it flexes his muscle and he smashes evil because Jesus is the one that does the battle. So that's why um, God said to Moses in the Old Testament, stand still, hold your prayer staff up, and I will win the battle. And that's why we have to pray. Whenever you encounter evil in any form, whether it's someone who's malicious or a gossip or they're mean or they're a bully or they're, they're, um, they're obviously totally against your faith and uh, you see evil in the world, Prayer is your default weapon because you go right to the Father and He, He takes care of the, the problem. Go right to God. That's good theology. 
is you go right to Jesus. He smashes evil. Don't address evil yourself. Go right to him and let him deal with it. He'll send his angels. The battle belongs to the Lord. In heavenly armor, we'll enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's formed against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. So, we sing glory and honor, power and strength to the Lord. And he will deal with the evil. So this is good for you to know in our battle against evil, Jesus is stronger. We don't fight evil, Jesus does. And he will do that on our behalf. And in John 10, you want to read John 10, Jesus says, I've come to give everybody life and life to the fullest. He wants to set people free. He wants to heal people. He wants to free them from darkness and give them peace where there is turmoil in their mind. This is God's word. This is our, our Lord Jesus. Let's remember that. And this is the great thing. This is what's so good about this song by Matthew West. When Jesus sees somebody that needs help, he will stay and make sure that he gives them that help. He'll never abandon people that want his help. And so, let's pray that we have faith and the people around us have faith to believe in the God who stays. I had never even heard the phrase social distancing. And then all at once, our need that if you ever feel God, so I hope that I know. So I hope this song is an encouragement that he is the God who stays. If I were you, I would have given up on me by now. I would have labeled me a lost cause. Cause I feel just like a lost cause. If I were you, I would have turned around and walked away. I would have labeled me beyond repair. Cause I feel like I'm beyond repair Oh, but somehow you don't see me like I do Somehow you're still here You're the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction When the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With a wide and you tell me nothing I have ever done Could separate my heart from the God who stays Oh, I used to hide Every time I thought I let you down I always thought I had to earn my way But I'm learning you don't work that way, no Cause somehow you don't see me like I do Somehow you're still here you're the god who stays you're the god who stays you're the one who runs in my direction when the whole world walks away you're the god who stands with wide open arms and you tell me nothing i have ever done could separate my heart from the god who my shame, it can't separate my guilt, it can't separate my past, can't separate I'm yours forever. My sin can't separate my scars, can't separate my failures, can't separate. I'm yours forever. No enemy can separate. You're the God who stays You're the God who stays You're the one who runs in my direction When the whole world walks away You're the God who stands With wide open arms And you tell me nothing I have ever done Could separate my heart From the God who stays you are the God who stays. The God who stays when we need him most. He'll never abandon us. That is good news to my soul. Let's pray. 
Lord, give us strength for this day to cling to Jesus. Protect us from the evil one. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.